Hey, Ashiel, things at Just going to talk about uh, prepping the dies for use. Um, briefly about trimming. Placement of the die spacer, uh, the margin wax pencil, otherwise known as a pencil crayon, and uh, then some cyanoracolate. Now, this whole wide variation of way different folks do it, and sort of reviewing the lit, and we'll um, we'll go from and Schillingbird's text. Let's. We'll just do a few things here just so, for discussion purposes. So we've got this case here. <clears throat> We're just going to start trimming the dies. One of the things that I was taught and sort of picked up my own and was actually reviewing Schillingberg, it was interesting, was when trimming the dies and allowing to get uh, a nice emergence profile from your crown, one of the, uh, I was taught in dental school to use a regular football burr and put it in reverse, but actually using one of these pear-shaped burrs, and there's different, um, grits if you may coarse so let's go right to right to left coarse kind of medium and then fine and these are cross cut a um, little variation on shape but it's, the idea is that you can take this burr and see it's got that just like a perfect match it's almost like really um, a perfect emergence contour profile for uh, to get a nice contour on that wax in the crown and additionally when you're spinning this at low speed it's not about it's spinning this way so it's not about to grip even if you're going forward compare it to going forward here it's going to possibly engage take a bite and then sort of roll over your uh, your margin when you're doing it this way it's just going nice and smooth uh, it's, it's engaging laterally so less problem of going uh, engaging your margin Ruining your margins, you can see it there. So that's a really nice, I keep using the word nice, a great little uh, burr for trimming margins. And then additionally, using a large, this is a large discoid cleoid, there's a whole bunch of different instruments. I mean, use whatever hand instrument to get in there and get that nice contour. Okay, so we've got pear shaped and the uh, discoid cleoid. So we did that for all the preps. Additionally, then we're going to place a die spacer. So there's a whole bunch of different types of die spacers, wide variations. Um, essentially, similar basis to to nail polish. Uh, there are different thicknesses. The literature I was just reviewing some lit before this. The effect of die spacer on retention fitting of complete cast crowns in 2006 in the Journal of Prosthodontics. Um, they suggest in their literature article, and this is one of the things with reading. It's almost like reading books. It's difficult. I mean, everyone's just reading the abstract a little can be subjective. They're suggesting that before cementation, better marginal fit was obtained when the die spacer covered all but the point, f but all the area but 0.5 millimeters short of the margin of the preparation, which is this is a millimeter. This is a millimeter, but uh, I don't have the dexterity to get 0.5. However, after cementation, the resin modified glass on or cement group had best fit with the same application of die spacer. So I'm not sure what that means, but. We're going to go with uh, the 0.5, sort of what the, the standard. 0.5, and the thickness, I mean, studies have shown from 25 microns to 60 microns. There's another study I was just looking at. I mean, so from one coat to two coats to 16 coats. I, mean, I don't know what resonant, what cement they were using. So here's 20 microns. Let's just go with uh, whatever you've been taught. I'm just going with uh, 20 microns, one coat. And there are different variations on a theme. You can place material. There's studies to show that as this, uh, as the the volatile monomer evaporates, evaporates, it changes the thickness. Of course, it does. Uh, however, so you can place this in a little dappen dish and then use a brush. I'll be honest with what probably 99% of the world does is right out of the bottle. So we're going to do one coat. We're going to try to go. So we get it here. 0.5, this is how I, one way to, I mean, there's many thousands of ways to do this. So these are going to be PFM crowns. And you can see how it's tacky there, it's already drying. So you can use thinner. To thin out your, um, even in a dappen dish, or thin out the entire bottle.
Perhaps this is akin to watching paint dry. I'm sure there are ways to m handle this, manipulate it, other than using this large brush. And if you know some, please put them in the comments. Okay, so there's that. Approximately one millimeter, half a millimeter away from the margin. I'll let that dry. So the next stage, and this is the requirements for our uh, laboratory and our techniques, is to place uh, red pencil crayon all the way around the margin. Now one of the things is that after you mount I want to mention that you got to make sure that the dye is clean so we're going to remove any of the little pieces of dye. Model stone, dental stone, and make sure underneath because we're going to place pencil crayon, a nice thin layer. Okay, so and then we're just going to place some cyanoracolate to uh, not only to harden the dye to prevent it from wearing out, but also keep the pencil on and also act as a thin spacer. Of course, there are variations on how to do this. Okay, so there we have it. And we're going to go and complete the remaining dies. Just to make sure I don't have any cooling around the margin. Okay, great. So that's uh, one more step in the process of uh, ramping up this uh, this one case. Cheers.